Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. Uh, as you can see, I have been busy, as always, I'm always busy. Uh, I've been messing around with a few blocks here. Uh, storage has been a bit of an issue. These things have been filling up awfully quick, which is no surprise to me. I have decided to build one of these and see how big it is. 420,000 liters. Tons of space. And yes, I went, went, went to go hit up the silver today because I want to make myself some new tools. But as you can see, my new tools that I had already are gone. And that's because I'm on a server now. Uh, one thing I didn't know about this, being on a server, or I totally overlooked, I should say, is I need to actually go into a cryo chamber. Uh, I'm having a bit of a server lag like there. Uh, yeah, so a f good friend of mine, Tricorders, had decided to set up a, a server. Uh, we might be getting into open it up for the community we'll see how things go for like security and stuff like that we know we want to make sure we don't have any people just anybody coming in and griefing us right but we'll see how it goes uh, this is a conveyor sorter I was looking at how it works and it's yeah whitelist blacklist same sort of deal right and I want to try to get some sort of storage system set up today because I want to build you know get a bigger better setup today especially making the refinery uh, we're actually going to do that right now because I want to make a new tool so it just takes so much less time to build stuff. And no, that's not it. Where is it? There it is. A refinery. Now, this thing is expensive and it's going to take a lot of parts. As you can see, it's big. And I'm probably going to be moving it afterwards. Uh, actually, I don't want to do that. I should probably actually find a good place for it. Um, let me zoom in here. Uh, oh, yeah. And then this thing here, I've been. Checking things out and learning a few things. So let me. It's actually better for me to just do this. We get out of here. Um, there's actually a way to put images in the game. And I thought that was pretty quite interesting. Someone's got this image to LCD converter that takes an image, turns it into some sort of monospace uh, font, and you can just put it in the the actual text panel here, and it turns it into an image. And I'm gonna actually do something like that, a little bit bigger setup. You probably see that in the th thumbnail already. But I do want to expand this quite a bit. Uh, not only do I want to get possibly one more of these, well, not possibly, but definitely I want to get one, one more of these in. I also want to get some sort of conveyor system set up, and I also want to start using the conveyor eject ejectors. I tried putting one on the side of the container here, and it actually popped out all 3,000 kilos in... I don't know, like three chunks, so it's pretty fast. And then there's collectors, which can automatically suck it into the system. I can have uh, conveyor sorters, so the ores only go go to the refinery. Uh, the ingot, the, well, I guess I could just dump it into a container, go to the refinery, and then have an output going out there, where it's only ingots going out, nothing's going in, sort of deal. But either way, I have been also getting a lot of silicone because I want to make some glass today, too. Uh, so I've got processing here. I've got that going through. I've got 2,000, which seems like a lot, but considering it takes five to make one bulletproof glass and a window takes like 25 to make. Uh, so yeah, I was thinking about originally going with glass ceiling, but I started seeing that there's actually pillars in the game for structural integrity. I'm using quotes here. And uh, I thought maybe that would be a good idea. So I'm probably just going to go with a block roof, stay with the light armor blocks. And then I'm thinking about the the windmills. Like obviously I'm gonna be going more on these. I'm thinking at least eight, maybe ten, because we're not gen we're not doing too bad for power, but it could be a lot less once we get the big refinery going and start getting stuff produced. And then at the same time too, I also have to get or I want to get you know a bank of maybe three or four of these set up in a conveyor network going to the hydrogen generator. Or uh, anybody online that doesn't have, you know, doesn't have a place to actually log off for the night, they can come over here, stay in one of these chambers, and they'll be good to go. So with that being said, I'm gonna gather up some plates. I'm gonna expand the platform, and I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna put the windmills. I was thinking about doing two levels above the above the lab. Possibly, I might still go with that, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So let me do some expansion, and I'll bring you back when I'm done. Alright, as you can see, I've expanded it to uh, three in the back, and I think it was seven or eight this way. Uh, should be enough. I do want to have sort of at least one or two areas where we can drive vehicles up to unload, and that was the purpose of this. I might have to expand a little bit more, but I want to figure out where I want to put the refinery now. And I'm thinking, 
it's all gonna be hooked up with conveyors i realize we're not gonna be able to hide conveyors under the ground probably could but eh whatever make them visible do them orange like i always do my conveyors all right uh so i am gonna have a, a wall going around with glass and corner blocks uh, let me actually check the refinery let's see where the ports are on this thing this one in the front two small ones in the back actually that's the upgrades in fact we don't have to access it so I could have the conveyors in the back or actually in the sides Hmm. They want to have everything that linked up. We gotta have the assemblers. Let me figure this out. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place it here. So that means the conveyor port's here. I'm gonna put probably just gonna put a, a medium container or small container on this platform here, there for for like a buffer, and then just have a conveyor collect on this end, and it should be able to drive up here with a rover or vehicle or fly up here whatever the case may be at the time and just unload it and then it'll just pump it right into the refinery the refinery will have a 15,000 liter uh, buffer until it goes in here oh wow that's actually pretty close let's go check this out uh, I've also for the first time we actually saw a strong unknown signal but it was like 55 kilometers that way no way I was getting there oh please tell me I get some nice tools here tier 4 T4 welder be perfect for right now so far I haven't found you know, anything other than just like suit stuff for the, from uh, these things here see if I get anything that's not it that's the wrong one apparently where are you it's funny how they always lie on their side like this I'll take it. I didn't even take my take my grinder with me. Oh well. Yeah, that's not. Oh, that's the parachute hatch. Does this not have? Oh, there it is. Ooh, badger drill. Yay. All right. Anyway. So let me. Uh, oh, I actually have to take that out. Put the uh, rebuild the floor because I forgot to do that. It's not going to be all scaffolding. So I'll bring you back. That's actually handy to know. You can, uh, the, they have a hitbox the same shape as them. You can see a transition from the refinery to the armor block right here. That's good to know. All right, that's the last batch. I'm gonna build all the way up. Oh, should actually make it. Uh, I'll leave it black for now. Right, so now the question is, is this actually getting power through the grid? And the reason why I ask that is because I don't actually have it filled in. It's just a girder. So this is technically non-functional. So does this actually have power? Where are we here? Refinery 2. Uh, only this is 560. Let's actually test this out, shall we? Let's go and get the silver, which is not in here. Actually, it is up here pick that uh, what else is going to do oh yeah I can't remember just want to get the silver in there see what it does and it is going I don't know how fast it is compared to uh, the other one but we can get speed upgrades too that's not what I want to do let's go in here that seems to be a little bit faster hard to say let me um, look at the mass count oh yeah it's about twice as fast I'm just looking at this number here that's good we're getting silver now I can go and make some new tools go over here and I was in here earlier and I'm like oh, I'm looking at the production I was like well I thought there was tools in here where are they where are they and I forgot I found them up here and I also f found out about um, icons being red in the assembler when you when it says the materials aren't there, it doesn't mean that they're, it just means that it's not in that particular inventory. If it's in the system somewhere, it will actually find it and pull whatever it needs to 
do whatever production queue that you have. So if I do, let's say, 10 plates, it'll only take the 70 iron that it needs to do it. So that was actually pretty interesting. So I can go ahead and make all of these. So one of those, one of those, and one of those. And watch, it'll turn. There we go. Because it pulled everything in. Took the nickel, took the cobalt, the silicon. And I will have new tools. I had one of those stupid moments too. I had it set to disassembling, disassembling for taking two, um, yeah, some spare tools from uh, the un unexpected deaths that happen when you're flying through trees or whatever. And I was crafting a whole bunch of plates not realizing that they were going back through the system and getting recycled back into iron. And it's like, well, I just printed a thousand plates. Where the hell did they go? All right, and there we go. Now you can go ahead and uh, recycle those two. All right, that's not what I want to do. Go to production, disassembly that, that. Make sure you go back to assembly. And there we go. So now I have tier three tools. So I can go back to this hot bar. Oops, control one. And I actually want to see how fast they are. Oh, that's not what I want to do. All right, welder, grinder, and drill. All right, let's see how well this works. Once again, some steel plates. <laughs> uh, one of the projects I actually w originally was planning on doing today, which I can't actually, I think it's a little too early to do, was to get some sort of, oh, it's a purple welder. That's cool. Oh, that's like twice as fast as the other one. Wow. Oh yeah, much better. Um, but I wanted to get some sort of flying mining machine, sort of. No. Oh, I need energy. Uh, yeah, some sort of vehicle to be able to go and fly around and do mining with that would be able to do the collect, auto collection, auto ejection into the system. And I actually, you know what? I should be. Do I wonder if that pod will do it faster. Charge on my energy, by the way. This will automatically charge up my hydrogen. Let's see how fast the part goes up. Yeah, it's about the same. Uh, but yeah, that was going to be, I think the realistic, most realistic option would be like the hydrogen thrusters. Trying to use the hydrogen engine would be to, you know, uh, it just doesn't generate enough power for what you would really need. But so what I want to do, because I have to, I want to get these cryo systems set up. Now, so I need to get the oxygen supply for those at the same time hydrogen and at the same time too have a hydrogen tank where I'd be able to use uh, in here they have these connectors and I want to see how these work are they like tether cables you connect or you just line up and it just sort of pulls it in sort of like a magnetic docking port sort of but use stuff like that to be able to uh, fill up these flyers with hydrogen but anyways, it's uh, dark, I got a lot of work to do, so I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, so I've got the pad set up. So the next thing I gotta do is uh, get some more iron going. I had to do another run up to the mine there. Uh, I've noticed something interesting about the, the rover there. I was mentioning how I had the, the large container on the back. And, uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, 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 and uh, and I, I would, what had, what had happened is I had the large container on the back there, or the yeah, it was the large container actually on past the back of the wheels, and everything was fine until I started loading up the cockpit, and as soon as I loaded up the cockpit, the whole front end came up and it sank down to the ground at the back. I had the same thing happen here, where I had something in the front. Like back end was completely empty. I took whatever was in the front out, and the whole front lifted right up. So maybe the suspensions only respond to weight that's in the cockpit storage. Loophole, maybe. We'll see. So yeah, I got all that refined. I don't know why I did that. I don't have the room for it. All right. So the next step is I want to. I was thinking about how I want to do this. I want to prevent this from actually outputting stuff back into this container that we're dumping into. So I'm actually going to put a conveyor sorter in there. Uh, I'm just going to use them as a one-way block right now because that seems to be the best way to do it. Uh, let's wait. Where is this going? We want to go the other way. Let's see, 
items only travel the way that's supposed to go. Of course, I need interior plates, so I'll drag all that over there. We'll grab these, and then I'll get this. Oops, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I gotta get my grinder and fix that. But I'll get this set up in the container and uh, uh, the input, which will probably be about here. Uh, and then I'm thinking from there we'll have the conveyors going. See, I don't know how I want to do this. I want to sort of have the machines outside, but at the same time I want to have an enclosed area for like the cryo chambers and stuff like that. But yet the hydrogen tank and the storage uh, would be outside maybe. I'm not too sure. But anyways, let me finish this up. All right, well, this is the setup I decided to come up with. Uh, I didn't bother putting the one-way conveyor or the conveyor sorter in there. Uh, what I did is I got a conve conveyor collector here. It does actually work. I've tested it out already. I put a chunk of silver here and sucked it in, processed it right away. I do have the container here for storage uh, or for backlog. The collector itself does actually have inventory space. Uh, it's got, it's not showing in here, but it's got about 6,000 liters in it, so that actually comes in handy, and then the, I didn't bother putting the sorter in, because it's just going to go in through anyways, and I'm thinking as long as I put a, let's say put a, another elbow here, uh, one of those, you can't really see it, but yeah, one of those going into a sorter, that just to pull it, maybe it'll actually just pull out any output from the refinery, so if this uh, thing does get filled up, it doesn't backlog into the other system. And with that, now it is getting dark. I do have to get some iron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back, bring back the day. Uh, while we do this, I'm going to stop clipping on my car. I'm going to put some of these ejectors on here. Okay, make sure this is facing the right way. Yeah, put one there. And we'll put one on the other side just for symmetry. Just because the suspension seems to be responsive. All right, and like so so i'm gonna get these finished uh i'm gonna kill some time until a day comes up and then uh we'll try out our first soda iron here i'm putting one on e either side i'm actually gonna name them too so and that way i know which side to actually go by but anyways i'll be right back okay i'm on my way back uh it would have been a little easier if i cleaned all my, my inventory first having to go back up at every 10 seconds is terrible uh, this thing has not been charging very well because of solar panels, to be quite honest, they're crap. And I forgot to put a ramp up here. So, I gotta park. Um, but one of the things I, like I said, I was doing, doing was plan on doing hydrogen gener hydrogen generation. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking the solar panel off here and putting, uh, my sliding, I was, uh, hydrogen engine on there. And that should be able to power it, no problem. But anyways, so I'm going to get a, a ramp up here. Uh, actually, we'll have it on this side here. Because uh, yeah, I, I had to take one ejector off. I had one of those moments like I go up with a load and I realize, oh wait, I can't actually get into the container. Because you can't access the container from the ejectors. So I'm going to put some, uh, try to get some soaps up here or something. I was looking at the, the block on you here. They have a go to the stairs find them here there's actually a ramp variation of it so i think i'm going to go with that and we'll see if we can actually no oh, it's right there see if we can actually drive up it and since i actually have materials on me i should be able to build this right here and i'm going to do shift p to get the color rotate it like so and uh where is it it is right there so just because of my bad driving i'm gonna put four of them and I need to fit it. Oh, these are expensive. All right, let me finish these up. Okay, all done. Now let's see if we can actually get up the ramp without running out of power. All right, let's uh, take the parking brake off so we can actually see what I'm doing. And uh, move the camera so we can actually see a little bit better. And now all I have to do is I have to go into, I should see if I got adjusted friction on these. Look at those batteries just drain all the time. Uh, I should almost put the conveyor connect uh, ejector on the other side. Oh, it made it. Oh, it made it. Okay, break. Oh, we'll go back a little bit more. All right, let's go through here. I put an equal sign. I can't use the asterisk because that's my recording key. 
So here we go. Uh, throw out. And it should be thrown it out. Unless it's done already. No, it has. I don't know what's going on here. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. Could be a little closer. I think it's got to, I got to choose collect all to collect from the container and throw out because it's an ejector. And it does it, I think, 1,000 units at a time. It's pretty cool. You just sit here and wait for it to pop out. And while that's doing that, you can actually see how much is actually going in there. It's doing it a hundred at a time. I tried doing it with a chunk it went out pretty quick, but it works. It saves me time to do that. I can go do other stuff while this is unloading. There's a big block variation of it too, so that's interesting. Like I said, my parking could be a little bit better. And I don't think there's really any way to configure it. Nothing other than just eject. Alright. I'm sure there's some way you can hack it with a script or something. But there we go. So I'm going to let that do its thing. And we are going to continue on. So next is going to be, like I said, I was going to put a conveyor here. And a, a sorter to go this way. And then that's probably going to go... Probably going to go into a storage. Since they're just ingots, they don't take up a lot of room as far as I know. Right, 5,000 only takes out 500 liters. I don't know if I want to have a big one like this for it, for the ores. Now, considering how much we could be going through, possibly. I don't think it's really necessary, but uh, we could probably go with a small one anyways. So let me work something out and uh, we'll get ready to move the assembler and move on to the next step. Okay, so there's the setup there. So I um, got the actually had a second collector here. Uh, one on either side. I did realize that you can actually access. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, my keyboard maybe. I don't know. Uh, I can't actually ac access a container from here. So we're going to put it. I'm going to put another collector on this side here. As soon as that comes up. Uh, you know what? Let's blame server server lag on this one. So we'll go there, go there, and I hope I have enough stuff to actually build this thing. Oh, oh, excuse me. All right, that seems to be a little bit better. All right, so yes, I need construction components. Of course, I do. Uh, anyways, uh, I forgot to explain how I got this set up. So I have, uh, I just got junctions under here with an elbow here. I got two very very collectors which go into a storage container here as a buffer which go into the refinery automatically and any ores that go in here get dumped into the system and smelted right away if it doesn't go into the refinery it should stay in here so if I have stone or actually I throw some components in here at least it's there and then I got another con uh, conveyor sorter there just as a one-way thing to make sure that nothing goes back into the refinery and I'm hoping that it'll automatically pull anything that's been processed out of the system. And then I got a large container here, which is going to feed through another one-way conveyor to the assembler. And this actually goes in through the bottom and then comes out the back side. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to put these upgrade modules on this if I do. But knowing me, I'll just have more assemblers and just have one of each mass producing. Uh, I was thinking about trying to actually set up to have individual storage, so I have one for pl plates, one for uh, tubes, one for computers, one for motors, whatever, but I figured that was pointless. So I just went to one big unified storage system here. I uh, should actually go on here just so we know which we're, what we're looking at. So that's 420,000, and that's going to be the end of the line for this setup, so then we can just do our thing here. And now that that's out, that's out of the way, uh, I do need to get some iron, I think. Uh, I do get, get, get all this stuff out of the way. And then we're also going to look at getting some p better power situations set up. Uh, what I'm thinking is I might have a couple of pillars coming up from the corners here. One here and then one over here. Ah. 
Uh, let me try something here. All right, well, that seems to be a little bit better. But anyways, yeah, I was going to get some windmills up. Originally, I was thinking about just having plain old girders, but I'm a little worried about structural fatigue. So I might just put straight blocks up. As uh, far as this area goes, this is all, I think I'm, this is all going to be outside. As far as the cryo chambers, maybe I'll set up a little room for them, but I do have to get all this stuff moved out of the way, put into storage and whatnot. But uh, let's address the power situation. Do I have plates on me? Sort of. Let's get that taken care of. I almost logged out and com I almost logged out, completely forgetting that I had nice high tier tools on me. Uh, would have been bad. So let's go ahead and get our jet pack on. Uh, get our blocks out, and of course do a shift P to get the block color. And it's always confusing because it shows that it's red on the bottom, but you can see that it's green on the outside. So I think I'm going to go. I've got some a bit of a server lag here. Uh, servers like on the other side of the country from me, so not the best. So that's four, five, six, seven. We'll go up eight. And then I wanted to get six windmills. I wanted to get twelve. So I'd have to have two rows of six. It'd be twelve plus one at either end for the to go up thirteen. Fourteen. Two, three, four. You get the GIF, let me finish it, and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. We got uh, twelve new windmills up there. Uh there's Apparently generating up to 300 watts kilowatts per piece each, so I'm generating about four megawatts right now, which is crazy. Uh, these four are going to be taken out, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, that was quite the grind getting all that stuff in. So now for the rest of it, uh, next we're going to get uh, the oxygen area set up. Um, actually, that's what I meant to do. Is I meant to clean out that con container, the big one, and move this stuff over here so I can build oxygen tanks. So let me do that. Okay, I'm back. Unfortunately, it's nighttime. I'd uh, reboot my computer to see if that would fix it. Uh, I've been uh, taking down these old windmills here. I figured it would me as well. And yeah, so next thing I gotta do is figure out where I'm gonna have everything set up. I was gonna get four, a couple more batteries set up too, and I never did that yet. But the amount of power I'm generating, I don't think it really matters. Let's see if I get a reading on this. Uh, it's just because it's fully charged, it's generating what I'm using right now. That's very interesting. That's cool. Even though I'm not getting green lights, I think the refinery's going. I got. I know the sorter uses power, and the H202 uses power and all that stuff. So we'll just leave that there for now, I guess. And uh, yeah, so what I want to do is I want to set up like a bit of a room here. Uh, I probably don't have any plates on me, do I? No, I don't. Uh, let me grab some plates. Okay, and then we'll take uh, this color. It's not quite black, it's sort of dark, dark, dark gray. So that's gonna be one corner, and then I do want to have a room back here to house this and the generator. Uh, I also want to get an oxygen tank too, and then I want to have everything hooked up with the conveyor system, but it's gonna be under the floor, I think. Let me get the cryopod up here. Let me, I want to see if it's got a... Um, what do you call it? Conveyor on the bottom. No, it doesn't. It's only on the back. Alright, well, that's fine. So we'll just have to get creative and try to cover it up as soon as I get out of the menu. So yeah, it's going to be there. and I'm, So I'd like to have a little bit of room. These are one across, one on. I'd like to get at least four, but not have them crammed together. So like one, and, and then one, and so maybe if I take the battery out, move this pillar here, and I close it all in with glass, and go from there. So let me get a few things moved and in place, and I'll bring you back. Okay, right, this was what it's going to be. Uh, originally it was going to be a glass roof, like I said, but I think I'm just going to go with blocks on this one. I know there's an interior wall block that's got the lights on the outside, but I don't really like that. Uh, and then this is going to be covered up. Now there's going to be a conveyor line here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, H202 generator right here. 
should be a conveyor coming out here connecting to another loading station like what I have over at the ore there but for ice and ice only this is going to be kept separate from the rest of the system so I can drive up dump, dump the ice off and uh, go back for more I'm going to redesign that rover uh, something with better battery power I realize it was a, a small bigger version of a small battery which which I'm going to use and yeah and then uh, so I'll be able to get I'll be able to use a large container and get much more ice and be able to keep this thing going. It only holds 750 liters, which is kind of an issue uh, considering some of these hydrogen, the hydrogen engine holds, oh geez, like 16,000 liters. It all depends on how fast that thing can generate it. Uh, so yeah, so what I'll do then is we'll take our cryopods here. Uh, I might color code them. I'm not sure, too sure. I uh, hit the wrong button. Uh, what would be a good color for it? Something nice, and warm, and welcoming. Oh, yeah, it's, it's still set to black. There we go. There's the color. Actually, what I'll do is I'll leave them white, and then whoever wants can color them whatever color they wish. And I'm going to put a little nameplate over, over top of each one, too, so. Of course, I need interior plates. Uh, I need bigger inventory. Probably should have gone with a 10 times size inventory, but even then, that wouldn't be enough. Never is enough. So I'll put one there, one there, and then turn, please. Thank you. Hmm. I didn't think of that. Yeah, I am going to have to move out one, so. And uh, there's going to be one there then. And go one here for now. Sort of like a visitor station. And then I have to move them over like that. And which means I get to move the whole pad out one, which is not big of a deal. Oh, that's the wrong tool. Anyways, uh, let me get these all built in and I'll get the conveyor set up and I'll bring you back. Alright, and here's uh, the visitor center. I got some lights in here right now. Uh, I tried to space them out a little bit. I am going to be having glass up here. Uh, there is going to be a little something up here. I was going to do it a little differently, but now I'm thinking about how I'm going to do it now. But we'll, we'll do that at the end here. Uh, for here, I'm going to put a sliding door. I'll uh, show you in the back here. i got all the conveyors hooked up. There's the oxygen tank there that's hooked up to these, which are just six-way junction boxes. And they're connected down here, which connects into the big old hydrogen tank here. And then it goes down to the end in that one. Was a different color for no reason at all. Yeah, I, I don't know why I did that. All right, now I still gotta get this set up, and so I do need to get a couple of you elbows down there and uh, collectors. Extend this a little bit. I'm gonna do this all off camera because I know I realize we're running long. And then the only thing left to do is put glass in, and I'll bring you back when that's all done, and to put the the la final piece of the puzzle on. Okay, here it is. I have no idea how long I've been working on this. I think it's probably close to 12 hours, and I'm not joking about that. But anyways, I got uh, four different cryopods here. Uh, each one has a nameplate over it. You can change your name if you want to stay here for whatever. Uh, no entry door, just because. You know, little pictures are kind of funny. But yeah, my picture doesn't li seem to line up properly. I think I uh, might be the, the file I'm importing in... Like I, I know what I'm doing, and I think maybe it's the size I'm giving the program is wrong. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, this is it. it has a storage area for uh, hydrogen and oxygen bottles, so anybody can come and take what they need. And then I get the storage system back here. The windmills are chugging along. Uh, oxygen tank is filling up pretty good. The hydrogen's not filling up too well. Or at least I don't think so. Uh, I think it actually tells me in there. I think it tells me in here. Yeah, 44,000 liters. Uh, it chewed through that ice like there was no tomorrow. Which is why I got this set up here. So we can drive up here and just dump a lo whole load of ice off here. Uh, this system here is separate from the other system. So at least nothing mixes up. Uh, I got a second H2O2 generator here. And yeah, and then... Oh yeah, one other thing I want to do today was put some, uh, some batteries in. I got a bank of batteries right here. Uh, let's see, where is it? 
Where is it? Uh, power blocks. Yes. Uh, I'll go with the big battery. I can use the audio in my hotbar, of course. And uh, we'll take EU as a color. Uh, thank you. And I'm going to put four of them here. I already put on to a four. Because I know exactly how many power cells I needed. I needed 320. I don't even think I have close to that. Uh, where are they? Oh. I was about halfway. So let me finish it, these up and I'll finish up the episode. Alright, I actually just checked when I started recording this episode. It was like seven hours ago, so it's it's been a while. So I did a couple more things. I get to put some lights up. No, I didn't put lights out here. I just put a light back here. I got the battery set up. Uh, each battery is taking in nine point nine hundred sixty kilowatts. Now I'm assuming that's for each battery. Because it's saying different stored power. So then that means my windmills are generating almost four megawatts right now. So I should check on that real quick. Yeah, there we go, generating three thirteen a piece. That's an amazing amount of power. What I will need it for? I don't know. I'll find something for it. Uh, oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't realize they actually had the indicator in different spots. Oh, well. Well, there's one last thing left to do. And you'll probably see it in the thumbnail here. And I'll show you what it is. I, should rec I thought I recorded the signal already about it, but I, apparently I missed it. But, I had a little trick with the panel, so I uh, decided to go uh, a little bigger on it. Uh, I had trouble with it before because I was used the images I was converting were uh, a little bit larger in resolution than the the output of these monitors are, which is 356 by 178, and so that's what I ended up having a black border around it. But I redid it and it works. And there you go. That's no video video editing. That's in game. That is just simple text. But anyways, that's uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode. Next episode, we're gonna I'm gonna redesign that thing there. Obviously, we're set up to get some product production going. Uh, I may try to go big block. I don't know. Uh, definitely gonna be a large container. That's for sure. Instead of this little three thousand at a time, got to get some serious production going. And uh, might see my neighbor Tricorder soon. He's actually well, he crashed landed over by a nickel there, so. Uh, we'll be seeing him. I'll be hanging out with him tomorrow night, which will be today when you guys watch this video. But anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.